So here we are. And I think this is the final part of the Cloister Pergola, as we are now calling it. So I think the last time that we saw this, uh, I can't remember if I'd put the first hardcore down, but that's now down, the membrane's underneath that. And I've just put down the gravel, which is a red gravel, which kind of suits where we are really and suits my garden. Uh, and keeping in with the cloister name, which is obviously religious, I've put this in for now anyway. Whether it'll last here, I don't know. But this is, uh, this is from a gift, really, from uh, Sam, who lives at Bardney Manor. So it came from the manor there. And it's only really a, a concrete reproduction, but it, nevertheless, it's, it's absolutely stunning. And I love it. So <clears throat> what's going to happen here is we're going to put a seat on the back there. And we can't decide whether it's going to be wooden, but I think I'd like to keep it as a metal one. So a metal garden seat, really. Probably be slatted with wood but a more older looking version of it, because I need to keep it looking the same, uh, looking the same as the, this, which is the reinforcing mesh. So I want it to really look like that and be in keeping with all the old stuff that I've got, including, including that pot there. Now, as I said before, Sometimes we've got to create a bit of uh, mystery, a bit of intrigue. We need to get people talking about things, um, creating a story, a journey, etc., etc. And and this is what I've tried to do with this. As I've said before, this is where we will be forced to walk around. We'll be forced to come around this way and walk down here. So I'll show you it again. We might as well now. This is the final part. Well, I think it's the final part. Who knows? Right, here we go. So that's from the back. So you get that lovely view through. So what will happen eventually, and uh, this bit here is obviously not finished yet. There will be more of a border cut into that. I'm still not committed to any sort of a shape. So I've left it as it is. And I'm going to make my decision. So the, the things that we do have to finish are those finials on the top there. Uh, they'll be sorted this weekend. So it's looking good. Things like the grasses look great next to it and that eupatorium. The rubbeckia down there, the yellow one. We'll see whether that makes the grade. Um, but it's in general, it's looking really nice. I'm ever so pleased with it. And it only started out last year with the three posts over there. That one, that one, and that one at the back that's all it started out with simple three posts and the one on top and then i decided to put the reinforcing mesh in and then from there came the next idea and this is what you need to be looking for you need to be looking uh to to improve it each time so your original idea may have been a good one as mine was but things developing gardens and change and, and alongside that we should uh, we should make the effort and make it look a bit better than what we intended so hopefully that's what i've done here and once this border's dug out and this new area is put into here, then from the back here, it'll look different again. So, yeah, so we get you forced walking around here, down here like this. Nice views up here as well. So there's nice views from wherever you look. So if you look at it from here as well, and this is a really nice view of it, and I really like that view because this path actually forces you to take a different route, which you probably wouldn't have taken normally, as I've explained in previous videos. So it looks good from wherever you look at it. And now the gravel's down, it makes sense of the whole thing. There probably will be more changes to be made. I don't know. I don't know. But one of the changes that I may make in the future and the near future is that entrance bit there may be leveled a little bit and I could end up putting something like a couple of slabs just in that area there. So it would run down there and it would make more of a definite entrance to the place. So it's probably cost in all, probably the best part of maybe 500, 
600 pounds to create this had i got a designer to do it or a builder to build me i'd probably you'd probably double or triple that and don't forget i've done all the hard work of putting it in so that's saved a fortune and the cost i've just mentioned would be just for the materials alone and it's not cheap i understand that people are on budgets um and I do always bear that in mind when I'm creating something for myself. I try and make it as cheap as I can. Uh, but the only way really that I can make it any cheaper is by doing the work myself, which I do all the time. And hopefully it gives you some inspiration and some idea what to do. So it ties in nicely because I've gone for the gravel because, again, it ties in nicely with that raised area there that runs down the side of the grassy bottom itself. And it's gravel as well, so it works really well. So we'll go up to the top, show you it from here. So we sit a lot up here at the moment, but we'll end up sitting down there. But now we sit down here, we get that view. And it's lovely. Sorry, that was a fly just come on the camera there, just had to blow it away. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, so that's how it looks. And... You know, things like this grass here, if you're wondering what that is, that's Miscanthus sinensis memory. Uh, and it's a beauty. It's gone into its uh, cotton wool phase, its blowing phase, which I absolutely love. But it looks great alongside this. Now, some of that planting in the back there will we'll have to in, uh, invariably have to change over time. Because once all the stuff starts growing over the top of it, we're going to have a shady border. And we need to redress that once that occurs. But for now, it's working quite nicely. <clears throat> We've got uh, this uh, whole area here will do well in shade. That, that's set already. And won't, it's not likely to need changing anyway. And then, in all honesty, the sun goes all over at there, all through the summer so most of this border should be fine but should some of it not work then I will move it I will change it as I said before the Pavoskia probably would like it more sunny but I think it'll do okay there's a Euphorbia Excalibur at the back of that it should be okay in here and obviously the Oster will do well and the Perscaria will do well but we'll see and the roses are starting again. This particular one is starting to flower again. It's a repeat flower. It did have a mosaic virus. It's now growing out of it. Um, and it's doing well. And that one's called, uh, what's that one called? Gertrude Jekyll. So it's Rosa Gertrude Jekyll. And it is a real beauty. It has a, it has a bit of a scent to it. But it, it suits this pergola really well. So quite exciting, isn't it? Creating this, uh, it'll uh, it'll not really be hundred percent finished to me until those two finials are up, and that seat is in there. We've already come across a, um, a seat that we may get, but we're going to do a little bit of hunting around before we commit ourselves to it. Uh, it is an older one, and should suit quite well. And ironically, in this garden, I ain't got no garden seats as such; only the seats. Um, sorry, benches, only seats. I've got no benches at all in this garden, whereas my previous garden, I had, I must have had four or five, and I've left them all there. But anyway, so, I think that's looking good. I can't say no more about it. I just get quite excited looking at it. It just, it just fills me with pride and joy, as it will do you if you try and create something like this. And it's fantastic. And it's not out of realms of the average person to be able to make something like that. I'm not a builder. Uh, I'm just somebody who's uh, a little bit creative. The sun's hitting it on top of that quarter's area at the minute. So it, it gives a different view, different times of the day with the sun. So when it's dropping, it's picking up things. And in summer, it'll be different again. So if you've got any questions at all on anything, I'm happy to answer them. If you look back on my in, into my YouTubes, you will find how I started and how I continued to make this actual uh, pergola. So this cloister pergola. And hopefully that'll give you some new inspiration uh, and some hope that you may be able to do something like this yourself. I'll talk to you later. Ta-da.